You're listening to the Pittsburgh Pile Driver. What the hell is that? Podcast. Well, well, well. Uh, it's that time of the week again. Not that time of the month. My time of the month is coming next month whenever I inevitably lose the Chooser Weight Championship because Lord knows I can't hang on to it for more than one month unless we have a month where we don't do any picks. That's the only way that I'm ever a two-month, one-month-plus champion. So next month, my time will come. It'll be my month time of the month time. But tonight is our time of the week where we record the P3 podcast. And that's what we're going to do here tonight. Sans blood, sans bard. Um, I'm going to need five feet because this is what we're going to do. Ransom the Madman here, one half of your valiant Choose Your Way Tag Team Champions. Alongside on the microphone with the illustrious Tiger Bomb Tom, who I have to probably say at this point is the longest reigning Choose Your Way Champion. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but he, he, he would have had to have beaten out Poot on that, on that one run. I don't know. I'll go back and look, but he's the longest reigning chooser weight champ. I'm going to say it. If I'm wrong, it won't be the first wrong thing I've said in my life. Get over it. That's how I roll. And we have the walking encyclopedia of wrestling knowledge. Our legendary lineman, Beef the Legend. The three of us are here. It's a triple threat. It's a trifecta. It's the Triforce of the P3 podcast. We're here to speak to you about wrestling. And I want to start the show off with, I don't know, it's not new, it's not, it's not fast count news, it's not, I don't know. It's a story that's been developing. I think we touched on it last podcast, but more has developed since then. So I would like to kind of get your guys' opinion on things. It appears that the Charlotte uh, Redhead McGinsky feud has spilled over into the backstage. Charlotte is, as far as the reports go, generally doesn't seem to be very well liked in the locker room these days. She was escorted out of the building, according to an article that I read, after her incident with um, uh, Mc, McChampion. I can't remember. I don't know why I can't think of her name. Somebody help. What's Becky her name? Lynch. Becky Lynch. Thank you, McLynch. Uh, I can say it because I'm of that ethnicity, so suck it. Um, she was, Charlotte was escorted out of the building after her confrontation in the ring with Mick Lynch and her backstage with, uh, who was it? Rhea Ripley? No. So, Sonya Deville? Who was it? Uh, yeah, Sonya Deville. Yeah, Sonya Deville what? was out there. Okay. So apparently she had a backstage confrontation with Sonya Deville after her in-ring confrontation with Mick Lynch. This, it's just, is this just a Charlotte Flair ego trip getting away from her? Or is like, is she, is this, is this, a, is this the self-destruction of Charlotte Flair that we're watching right now? Or is this just a momentary hiccup? We're getting a little out of control with our ego. It's going to get reined back in. And in a couple of weeks, everything will go back to normal. What do you guys think? Go ahead, Beef. I because I because I know I know you got the. I want I want to hear the hot take from somebody that's usually the knee jerk, right there. Oh, of that. no, I'm just saying. He... I mean, I just don't care. I'm so over WWE right now. Oh my! Like you know what? I don't know, man. I'm just. I feel like. I don't know. Part of it, I feel like, might be a slow news week. Although, not really, because there's actually a lot going on. But, like, I, I feel like this has been a long time coming. And this is what happens when you create a monster. You know, they've done nothing but pad Charlotte's ego. They've done nothing but make her believe that she is God incarnate walking on the earth. They've done nothing but, like placate to her every whim and desire 
So you know what happens when you placate to someone's every women desire that they think that they are infallible. History has shown again and again the nature way is that the folly of man. No, that uh, you know when oh. when someone's head gets too big, it's inevitably popped, and they fall back down to earth. So you think I, this is the popping? Is that what's happened? I, I do. I you know the 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 chickens are coming home to the roost, Bobby Boucher. Um, you know this is this is what happens, Larry. This is what happens when you when you push a Charlotte in the in the Fed. Um, do you believe the the one report that I sent you guys? That one story. Apparently, it seems like all of the heat is falling on Charlotte because she was the one that kind of started that in-ring thing on that segment. Like, she's the one that first went off script. 100%. And Becky Lynch... Becky Lynch followed suit, but did so in order to kind of save her character. So, if this one article that I shared with you guys is to be believed, it doesn't seem like there's any heat on Becky Lynch because she None. was just... Like, she's, she was doing what she had to do to make it look like, oh, I'm not being made to look like the chump. Yeah, so she's sticking up for the for, for, for the locker room because Charlotte has been, again, a monster. You know, Charlotte is a diva and is and is acting like one. And the locker room, you know, basically put her on notice. No one else had the clout to really stand up to her. Maybe Sasha, but she's doing her own thing. So Becky comes back after being gone for a year more. And you know, is 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 here seeing everybody kowtowing to Charlotte. She's like, no, 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 no. Here's what's going to happen. I'm not playing your game because I too have clout, and I too can make you look like a child. So correct me if I'm wrong on this beef now, because I I don't watch the weekly. So I'm gonna, to the best of my knowledge, I'm gonna try to recount what happened <laughs> with this whole Becky Charlotte thing, and you tell me if I'm wrong or fill in any gaps. But um. So it was basically Sonya Deville was out there, and we know that you know Becky was the SmackDown uh, Women's Champion, Charlotte was the Raw Women's Champion, and they basically were going to swap title belts or whatever. Correct? Yeah, I mean, and, and the, the videos out there, we don't we don't need to like recap. That that's something that I think as a podcast we need to get away from. You know, if 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 people don't know what we're talking about. There are videos on demand everywhere. Well, that that yeah. well, well, it's, well, it's partly well, it's partly for short. me. It's partly for well, me too because I was because I I'm I'm catching stuff here and there, but I want to make sure I have the right story because I don't I don't like to. Long story short, there was supposed to be a title swap. Yeah, uh, they were supposed to hand either each other or Sonya Deville the titles. Charlotte instead decided to drop the title like oops, and then Becky Lynch threw her title at Charlotte Flair. Got it. Okay, so yeah. So, so the fact that Charlotte went off script, like you're saying, she, uh, you know, she's getting the heat, and probably rightfully so. I, I, from from what I had heard, McMahon was pretty upset with her backstage that, like, she didn't come back and talk to him or whatever. Like, she kind of just said "fuck it" and, you know, stormed past the gorilla position and everything like that. So, I, you know, I mean, hey, scientific method, fuck around and find out if she thinks if Charlotte thinks that she's bigger. Than the WWE, <laughs> guess what? I'm afraid I've got some bad news because in Vince McMahon's world, nobody is bigger than him and the rest of WWE. And you know what happens to people that get bigger than the WWE, either organically or you know or not, get snuffed out real quick. There, there are people who have been able to get away with with bad attitudes in the past. Yeah. But yeah. these people, these people were so <sighs> entrenched with McMahon. Like McMahon was so far behind them that, that they could get away with that poor attitude because they were the big draws. They were the big money. You know, I'm sure Ric Flair could get away with, you know, some, some big attitudes because he's Ric Flair. Brock Lesnar's been able to get away with it because A, Brock Lesnar doesn't give a shit and Vince knows it, and B, Brock Lesnar's a big draw and he makes Vince McMahon a lot of money. Right. So if he has a shitty attitude with Vince or with anybody else, frankly, backstage, nine times out of ten, Vince is going to look the other way because he's going to see, well, what am I going to do? Reprimand this guy? And then he just says, F it and I'm done? Or do I ignore this little hissy fit? And continue to make all the money off of him. And I think Shawn Michaels was another one where, you know, 
Yeah. Shawn Michaels' poor, poor attitude backstage was rightfully documented, but he was making Vince McMahon lots of money. Oh, absolutely. Charlotte, yeah. Charlotte doesn't, in her world or in her, in her mind, she might think she's big news. She might think she's a big deal, especially because of what her last name is. But just because your last name is Flair doesn't mean shit. Like, WWE's pushing her, yes, because of her last name. But she doesn't yet, at this point in time, have the clout to, to fly off the handle and to fly off script and go into business for herself and not be reprimanded for it, or at least have people say, like, oh, okay, we're going to have to we're gonna have to do something about this. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think, in light of the recent, you know, the the dark side of the ring stuff that came out about uh, about uh, Ric Flair and the whole plane ride from hell. You think Charlotte has lost clout, or do you think that they're still, for the no! most part, behind her? No, they had a perfectly easy... They, they had a month to have her lose that title. Yeah. In one way or the other. A month between when she was drafted to SmackDown... And when she actually went to SmackDown a month. No, no, no. Huh? No, nope, because that's Ric Flair. This is Charlotte Flair. They are two different entities. And I, I agree with that, with that, with that perception. You know, you can't, even though, you know, they've, 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 they've pushed her to the Flair, you know, she shouldn't wear the sins of her father. Okay. But fair enough. that being said, she's making her own sins, uh, as it were. Um, yeah, she's going to dig in her own grave. I, if, if they let Bret Hart walk away in the mid nineties, nobody is safe. Nobody. I'm sure that if Steve Austin would have said, you know what? Like, you can't fire me. I'm sure that Vince McMahon would have been like, you want to see, you, you want to see what's going to happen? Stone Cold, here's what's going to happen. <laughs> so, yeah. yep. um, you know, because Tom nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. That no one is bigger than the Fed. Yeah. And, and Vince realized that a long time ago. That's how he got away with letting Hulk Hogan walk away. With letting Bret Hart walk away. With letting The Rock go to Hollywood. Like, that's how... Because he gets it. You know, this is a turnkey operation at this point. As long as they do the bare minimum, which... Is, is arguable sometimes. They can then, you know, just wash, rinse, repeat. You know, yeah. copy and paste. No, no, you're not, yeah, you're not wrong with that. I think also, and to Ransom's point, when he said, you know, how much, uh, you know, it was well documented that Sean was not the best person to work with and everything like that, but uh, to his credit, he fucking got it done in the ring, and he was one of the greatest, you know, arguably the greatest in ring performers, even, you know, is even touted by uh, Ric Flair, who, you know, for so many was considered, you know, one of the greats. Um, you know, like... It's, well, that's it. Charlotte doesn't back it up in the ring. Right, 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 right. That, As, um, and, and, you know, M Michaels did. Right, and, they're, and it they're... was... It was also a, and I, I, I don't want this to be a cliche thing when I say it was a different time, but it, it was too because one, they weren't sure. they weren't publicly traded back then. Uh, two, they were, you know, uh, I, I'm sure, kind of going through the trenches of the whole Monday Night Wars and everything like that. You, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's a sort of bond there where, as the owner slash promoter or whatever you know in in general whether it's whether it's WWE or whether it's IC, uh, IWC or whether it's Impact or Ring of Honor or wherever there there's a sort of bo anyways um i was going to say there's a sort of bond that i feel you would want to have with some of the talent to like for that for for it to kind of be like an open door which we've heard that I, I've heard from many accounts that, you know, like, like Jericho said, like Vince is like a father to him or whatever. And, you know, he's, he's always there. He has an open door, but when you come to Vince with an idea, if he disagrees with you, he usually Jedi mind tricks you into thinking his way anyways, which is kind of weird, but whatever is. So it's, it, you would want my point being is that back then there with everything that they were going through there's a sort of bond i'm sure that you know Vince had with some of the with 
obviously some more than others, but some of the uh, some of the wrestlers to where he probably did let some shit sly. You know, I've got a I've got a take for you. Uh, I think that Charlotte is one hundred percent the equivalent of Shawn Michaels in the nineties. Um, I don't, <laughs> you know. Whoa! I uh, oh. hear me out. Hear me oh. out. When you think of total package, she literally has it all. Is she the best in ring? No. Is she good enough to get by? She sure is. Will people carry her? Mm hmm. But at the end of the day, does she put on, you know, matches that are watched? Mm hmm. Does she put on pretty good matches? Mm hmm. Does she have some great matches? Mm hmm. Does she have the look? Mm hmm. The style? Mm hmm. Like the promo? Yeah, she does. She's a bitch, but she's got it. What, what I'm saying is this. <laughs> I think technically proficient wise, I think Sasha's got her beat. I think that Becky's a bigger personality, but I think when you roll everything together, that's Charlotte, and that's the argument I've been making for Shawn Michaels for the longest time. Shawn Michaels was never oh. the most technically proficient person in the world. He's never been the best technical wrestler in the world. But yet he goes out on WrestleMania and he puts on bangers that people can't follow up with. I give you Charlotte Flair. Like like it or hate it. You know, she puts on really good matches when they matter. I got really it. good WrestleMania matches, really good SummerSlam matches. She's got the pomp, the circumstance, obviously, and the the the, the pedigree. So yeah, I mean, if if and, and I mean the women's division right now is 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 in a weird place, but I think that she is kind of like the centerpiece to that women's division, and and it does me no good spirits to say that. But I really believe that she is, like, pardon the pun, the linchpin here. Like, I think that if you pull her out, then the women's division kind of sort of starts to fold in on itself until they figure some stuff out. But I'll give you part of that. I'll, I'll give you a part where I can see it being... I'll get, I, it's comparatively to the rest of the women in the women's division, is she the most well-rounded i.e. total package or whatever. Yeah, you could say that. Um, but there's two but I know. But there's two thi but there's two things that I that I'll uh that I'll put out there. One, it's the Roman Reigns effect slash John Cena effect. Mm -hmm. You know, keep shoving her down our throats. We don't we don't want that. We know she can be a bitch. Okay, cool. Yeah, she makes a great heal. <coughs> Guess what? I'm, I'm just tired of her getting shoved down our face. I'm tired of seeing other people not getting title opportunities and everything like that too. Why do you think people booed Shawn Michaels and cheered Stone Cold? Why do you think people booed Bret Hart and cheered Stone Cold? Same thing. Okay, but and I'll say this too. I will disagree though that she's the equivalent of this of this era to saying that she's the Shawn Michaels of this era because Shawn Michaels could of go the out the women's division of, of the, the women's the, division. Of the right, women's right, division. I, I want to make know, that clear. Even uh, even still of the women's division. We said it before, Shawn Michaels could go out and wrestle a fucking broomstick and put it on an entertaining match. I don't think you would get that from Charlotte Flair. I don't see her not a chance. I, I don't see her in ring skill to that equivalent. Now, even though, like you said, Shawn Michaels wasn't the most technically proficient, yeah, but he he had it, it may not have been a technical move set like like a Bret Hart or like a Benoit or like a Kurt Angle or anything like that. But he had, but there was something about his repertoire that was entertaining. He had very, you know, he's he's the showstopper, plain and simple. I don't see that from Charlotte. I just so uh, I'm glad that Tom answered B first. It gave me a chance to compose myself. <laughs> What's the question? What's the question? That's okay. Gave me a chance to take five feet. I'm not. We're not going to go into a debate or an argument. It will result with me getting in my car, coming over and putting my foot through Beef's window. Fair. <laughs> Comparing Charlotte Flair to Shawn Michaels is probably one of the greatest acts of wrestling heresy that I could think of ever existing. There's no comparison. I'm not done. Okay. There's no comparison between the two as far as skill entertainment or value charlotte flair is the mario of the women's division she's balanced overall but that's it she's balanced 
There are people who do in-ring better than her. There are people that do promo better than her. There are people that do a lot of things better than her. But she's average and balanced. Just like Mario is in Mario Kart, just like Mario is in Smash Brothers. If you don't know what I'm talking about, freaking Google it. You'll figure it out. Nerds. I don't feel like she excels anywhere. I see every single Charlotte Flair match, every single one I watch, I go, ugh, that was, ooh, nope, not done good. Ooh, that was awkward. Uh, yikes, that was sloppy. Every single one. And now, it's not, I'm not saying she's got off on the ring. She's not. But every single match that you watch of hers, and I don't think it's, you, you can't blame the opponent, not for every single one. But not, not one match that I watch with Charlotte Flair do I go, she was spot on and looked perfect the whole match. Never. Here's some, here's some homework for you, boys. You got, the, you got the cock. Go back and watch Charlotte's WrestleMania matches, her SummerSlam matches, her, her Survivor Series oh. matches. You find a bad Charlotte Flair match in those. Because I, I'm not what, saying that they're bad I, matches. I'm saying that there are times in those matches where it's like, oh. That looks super Other, awkward. Or, oh, that was super weird. I, I I disagree. I don't think that there are those on the big stage. That's what I'm saying. Shawn Michaels, ha- listen, man. Uh, coming to you from someone who does not have rose-colored glasses, who couldn't give a shit about Michael Hickenbottom, uh, I was never a Shawn Michaels fan. I give him the credit that is due because I think that it warrants it. But I don't. I never saw anything out of Shawn Michaels that made me go, "Man, what an amazing performer! What an amazing match! What a great, you know, this, that, or the other thing." Yikes. He performed big on big stages. The ladder match, the matches with the Undertaker at WrestleMania, the match with Ric Flair, and let's keep in mind that Shawn Michaels gets a ton of credit and praise for the matches at the tail end of his career after he's been a seasoned vet. Charlotte Flair, near as I can stay, near as I can figure, is just getting started. Now again, it does me no great pleasure to make that comparison, but the fact of the matter is that's where we are with the women's division. They had their chances with people like Sasha, with people like Becky, with people like Asuka, hell, with people like Carmella. They had Alexa Bliss, they had all the chances in the world to try and capitalize when Charlotte's been out doing things and have somebody pick up the rock, but they failed to do so. I think a lot of Charlotte's Flair, Charlotte Flair's shine is in the booking, but I, I say the same thing about Shawn Michaels. I think that a lot of Shawn Michaels' oh. shine was also in the booking. I think, Oof. and I, again, I'm not taking anything away from Shawn Michaels. I, I think he had a great career. I think he had plenty of good matches, but he had plenty of matches that made me go, ugh. So, you know, I my my point is this: we're 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 we're, we're way off the 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 tracks here, gents. My 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 point is this: is that at this point, Charlotte Flair is the monster that WWE made. But now they have to sleep in the bed that they made with that very monster because as much as Vince McMahon doesn't want to admit it, AEW is competition. And if they let Charlotte Flair go to a place that really has a burgeoning women's division, which is obviously where she go because that's where her husband is, her fiance or whatever they are now, you know, that's where she's going to end up. That's the God's honest truth. If they let her go, it would be equivalent of letting Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels walk away in the 90s. And I know that's not that Bret Hart did, but imagine them letting go, letting Shawn Michaels go to WCW after he left at WrestleMania, you know, or, or Stone Cold, or, you know, etc. That would be the, the, the equivalency. I don't see that happening. So they got a lot of problems to work out. Well, I, I don't think Charlotte is going anywhere. I have to try to compose myself. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know why. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did to him to make him <laughs> say such vulgar things in my ear hole tonight. I, I don't know. I, the I, truth I've sucks. Done, I've done the him. truth sucks. No, you don't no understand what truth, truth is. No. Okay. You couldn't, you couldn't spell your way out of a white paper bag trying to spell the word truth. How dare you? 
Um, <laughs> I don't think she's going anywhere. No, because like Beef said, she's going to wind up in AEW because again, that's where Andrade is. Right. So they're not they're they're not going to let her go there. But, whew, man, something. <laughs> I, I f- here's my question. If she continues down this path of just ego out of control, piss poor attitude, I'm Charlotte Flair, I'll do whatever the hell I want, what are you going to do? Is there a point where Vince and Co says, "All right, you know what? We've had enough." We're not gonna we're not gonna release her or fire her because we don't want her going anywhere, but we need to bring her down a peg or two. Is that do you? They've done it before. It's clear that they've done it before. We uh, you know we can all go back and go like, oh, this person was a house of fire. They had a shitty attitude, pissed somebody off, and got buried. Oh yeah, look at Titus. Does it? <laughs> does it? Oh, does it get? Yeah. Does it get to that point with Charlotte? Is there a point where Vince will say, you know what? I've had enough. It's gone on long enough. Her attitude's gone too poor. We got to do something about it. We got to knock her down a peg or two. Or do you think if they're on the same line of thinking that Beef is, she's the linchpin of the women's division. Stupid wind. She's the linchpin of the women's division. We're going to have to keep pushing her. She's going to stay on top no matter what. And she'll continue Mm -hmm. to have carte blanche to do and say whatever she wants because we can't afford to bury her. I, I feel that everybody has a breaking point. So I'm going to say the simple answer is yes, that there is a point where they would say enough is enough, but I feel like it would take quite a bit to do it. And I'm sure that she'll be able to get away with a lot more than a lot of other people would be able to. Um, it, you know, it, it's like I said, uh, the the one I brought up now, granted, you know, was he ever, uh, did he ever get a big singles push? No, but look at Titus, you know, he, he you know, primetime players and everything like that, you know, decent tag team, whatever. Um, and then, like, you know, whenever, uh, I, I can't remember what the event was, I, I think it was on a Monday Night Raw or something like that, when everybody was on the stage, McMahon came uh, uh, came up the rampway or whatever, and uh, Titus had, uh, you know, like, gave him a attaboy on the shoulder or something like that, and Vince fucking freaked because of that. Like, so, yeah. I, I think there is a limit, but it's just a matter of how much when it comes to Charlotte. Well, here... So, I think that, yes, yeah, Charlotte can get away with murder, but heed the tale of the Ultimate Warrior. Heed the tale of Jeff Jarrett. People who put WWE in a position to make a really tough decision that bet in themselves and, and outplayed themselves. Um, Jeff Jarrett, the ultimate warrior were never bigger than when they were in WWE at all period. So I, you know, I, I, again, I, I don't think that she's going anywhere. I, but at the same time, I think that she's the type that if she gets benched, if she gets put in the sidelines, if she gets, you know, her push taken away, she could take her ball and go home. Oh, yeah. A la Shawn Michaels. Well, I mean, I, I agree that, you know, like, she would be the first one to... Dude! I, I agree that I, I could see her doing something like that. Um, but that's just, that's just going to extend her contract, though. Like, you can't take your ball and go home and ride out your contract, can you? Sam Punk like if you, did. Uh, did he, though? Like, was it that? Because I, th- I, th- I thought they stopped that. Like, oh, if you're not going to appear, if you refuse to work, you just get that time tacked onto the end of your contract. Is that not how that works? No, I'm like pretty if, sure if Sam Punk gets... just, didn't, just, just didn't go back to work the next day. Wait, are you talking about? That's interesting. About- I didn't. I never thought it operated like that. Like right. I thought, are you, if talking- you refused to work and you went home and you just sat at home? Your contract just keeps getting extended. I. I mean, you void, you know, any any earnings, obviously, and things I think, like that. Yeah, as I say, so I think like I think it depends. You're making a financial decision, but yeah, I mean, and and I, you know, 
At the end of the day, could they make it a legal matter? They probably could. Well, cause the, Would they? I don't know. Well, isn't that, they did something with that to Brody Lee, didn't they? With they his contract. Did, yeah. So but I mean not, so but I, not because he chose not to come in because right. he was injured. Well yeah, so and I, because they wanted to stick it to him and stick it to AEW. So I so I get I get where Ransom's coming from with that. So yeah, I think I think it's a case by case thing and I, I I think it depends on how things are structured. Um But um but yeah, I mean you I could absolutely see Charlotte doing something like that. I could see her having the ego to say, you know what, if you're not going to use me the way I feel you need to use me, I'm going to bet on myself. And, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, it's, the thing is, is while, while Beef's not entirely wrong, I can, you know, whether we <laughs> like it or not, WWE seems to put Charlotte in that linchpin sort of situation there. There's plenty of, there's plenty enough talented women on that roster that I feel like if, if you push them right, that could do it. A la Alexa, uh, Alexa Bliss, a la Becky Lynch, a la freaking Carmella. That's the thing. And, and, I, and Shana, like Shana I, Baszler too. Shana it, Baszler. Like, come I, on. I, I, I don't think that if you take Charlotte Flair away from the WWE women's division, that it crumbles or they struggle or it's just... It turns into mediocre cockroach nonsense. Like, uh, yeah, she she's involved in a lot of stuff, but that's because they're pushing her and involving her in a lot of stuff. And then and when she was out, for whatever the reason was, they knew she was coming back. So maybe they didn't want to take their time and money and invest it into somebody else into a long term gig because they knew, all right, well we got a finite amount of time before Charlotte comes back, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna push Charlotte. So we're not going to bother. We're not going to bother investing time, money, and effort into a long-term push for somebody else when we know Charlotte's going to come back and we know what we're going to do with her when she comes back. Right. The WWE, I feel like their women's division is strong enough now. Like, this isn't the Divas division anymore. There are plenty of very talented, very strong women in the WWE that if they removed Charlotte from the equation... Maybe you feel it. Maybe you feel it for a couple months. Maybe there's a void. Maybe there's a, well, what the hell are we going to do? But I think it bounces back faster than, faster than we might believe because, like Tom said, all these talented people are there. Oh, Rhea Ripley even. I've, I don't know how I didn't mention her, but God bless her. Like, you know, that's another personality right there. Come on. You know? Yeah, there's, I feel like there's plenty of people to pick up the ball and continue to run with it. Now... Here's what I want to say about this. Before Beef continues to make his slanderous accusations against Shawn Michaels and continues to compare Charlotte Flair to Shawn Michaels, before I start bleeding from the nose because I've aneurysmed in my brain, <laughs> I need to move on away from this for my own heart blood and blood pressure because I'm feeling just this is going to send me into a poot style depression if freaking Beef continues down this road. I can't handle it. Ring of Honor has released every single one of their wrestlers from their contracts. Yep. That's pretty big news. That, that definitely is. Um, so apparently, and according to the tweet, I'm going to pull it up here so I have <laughs> the reference. Um, so during the pandemic, they, uh, you know, they kept everybody under contract. Um, they wanted to make sure that everybody was taken care of. I'm going to read the, uh, I'm going to read the reply to, Dave Meltzer here from the from the screenshot. Yeah, um, Twitter. It, it says uh, throughout the pandemic, our top priority was to keep everyone healthy and safe. And despite not producing any live events over eighteen months, we were able to keep everyone fully contracted. So good on them. They were able to do that. Make sure that everybody, you know, all the performers could, you know, put food on the table for their family. Cool, good stuff. Uh, we now find ourselves <laughs> at a time. Yeah, <laughs> we now find ourselves at a time where we need to make changes to our business operations and are planning a pivot for Ring of Honor with a new mission and strategy. So, you know, unfortunately, their funds are their funds are running a little low here. Um, Did I read something somewhere that said that they were going that we're going to shift more towards an independent style wrestling model? Well, they already did, were. Did any of you? They? I was just say what, uh, what? 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 the hell have they been doing for the last twenty years? Yeah, I don't know. I thought I read that somewhere. I thought maybe I thought maybe one of you guys had read that too. Maybe I made it up. I don't know. No, nah, I, I didn't. I, I haven't seen anything else about that. It's, 
well, that's except just for the works for me. Um, my, I'm no journalist. <laughs> my only my only thought um, before everybody starts hitting the panic button on this that if if there are huge Ring of Honor marks out there or anything like that, the I what? say if there are huge Ring. I of heard Honor. what you said. Okay, <laughs> I was making sure. I wasn't sure if I got for, robot. Being facetious. I I wasn't sure. I was making sure my connection was good. My my router shut off a little bit ago, but my my actual uh -oh. internet modem. Yeah, but my internet modem was still good, so I was going via Wi Fi. So if the quality got if the quality got shitty there for a moment, you know why. Um, but my point uh my point I wanted to make is don't panic it's because. Look at what look at what AEW's been able to do, you know, opening the quote unquote forbidden door. Maybe there's something in the works. Maybe Ring of Honor will have some sort of working relationship with an impact or a new Japan or an AEW or whatever. So maybe it's not exactly the end of Ring of Honor, but you know, maybe they just gotta figure some shit out before they can say, okay, we can offer these contracts to A through Z or whatever. So I I wouldn't put on the I wouldn't put on the panic tinfoil hat just yet, um, but yeah, it's it's pretty big news the fact that they do that. But again, if they re if they're releasing those people from the contracts, maybe that means they're just going to be restructuring whole brand new contracts. So, well, you know, jury's out on that one. But what do you think, Beef? Beef, what's your hot take there? Uh, I'm I'm pouring one out for the homies, man. Oh. Uh, yeah, um, it's it's it is a sad day. I I read that yesterday and it, and it, and, it, and it blindsided me. Um, you know, I, I have I I have a lot of feelings about Ring of Honor. Not all good, not all bad. Uh, I I think that this is it, at least it for now. It may come it may come back in a different form with a different owner down the line. But I think that this iteration of Ring of Honor is is we've we've seen the last of it. Oh um, wow! You know they had all the momentum in the world four or five years ago. Um, I mean, you know, realistically, twenty, you know, fifteen, twenty years ago, they had all the momentum in the world too. Um, but they have more eyes on them now. Uh, they had a partnership with New Japan. They had a show. And fucking Madison Square Garden with New Japan. Yeah. Uh, like, you don't get much bigger than that. Th yeah. The problem is... Well, there, 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 there are a couple. Um, they have TV time? They do. They're, they're on Fox, I think, every Sunday. Yeah, but, uh, that's, okay. but, but now, question on that. That's not stuff that's, like, necessarily up to current. That's from, like... I don't know. Is I I don't I I have no idea. I I've seen it advertised before. Like before I moved, I remember it kept, I would keep seeing stuff like Ring of Honor, fucking this Sunday, ba 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 ba. And I'm like, yeah, but isn't that stuff from like you know months and months ago? Like I wasn't sure if it was maybe. It, it and, definitely and be, it wasn't but, it wasn't know. it wasn't live. That's for sure. But I mean, it was, no. either way, it was taped. But I thought for I thought I remember somebody telling me before that. The stuff that usually made it onto TV, onto like <sighs> CWTV or whatever, was like fucking uh, was at least a couple months old. And that and that could be, and then that's that's a smart business model because you're not going to give away your show the week after because then guess what happens? People stop coming to your shows and they're like, I can just watch it next week. Right. Um. So like, I get it. I I 100% get that if that's the fact. Um. But like, honestly. Like they started making some pretty hasty booking decisions, <sighs> right? But they the architects of their own downfall. Is that what you're saying? A kind of honestly, like first of all, the the true villains. Well, there 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 are two groups of villains. First, Vince McMahon and Triple H, because as we all know and love. Guys like Brian Danielson, Samoa Joe, CM Punk made Ring of Honor. Adam Cole, you know the the list goes on. I was like, wondering if Adam guys... Cole was in Ring of Honor. Oh yeah, yeah, he was. He yes. was. Um, he was the leader of the Bullet Club in that iteration of it. Yep. In Ring of Honor, whenever there was like, whenever there was like yep. two different Bullet Clubs going on, like the one in Japan and one in Ring of Honor. Oh. Yep. Okay. So like, so like, yeah. You know, Triple H and and Vince McMahon pretty much rated uh rated Ring of Honor 
on the regular to get their new NXT superstars, and that's turned into, well, you know, let's just do our homegrown talent now. So now that's, you know, burned and tarnished. Um, and also, I am going to have some scathing words for the Elite. Basically, they use oh. a whole bunch of Ring of Honor talent, including the Ring of Honor title. That's right, Cody Rhodes had the Ring of Honor title. Uh, and I believe he had it on the line against a, a Kazushika Okada, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure what the exact order of operations was. When was this? Uh, right before Recent? All In. No, right, oh. right before All In. Um, so basically, they used a bunch of independent talent, including a bunch from Ring of Honor. Then, you know, kind of said, hey, we're just going to do our own thing. Uh, so sorry, guys. Um, so basically, they used them to stand on their back and propel themselves into the stratosphere. Yeah. So they are not without guilt either. Right. But honestly, you... like that, the model that Ring of Honor produced was never going to be profitable for them. Because every wrestler worth their salt use Ring of Honor as a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. they sure there do. are very few who said, I'm going to use Ring of Honor and, and be loyal to Ring of Honor. They went to Ring of Honor and they said, I'm doing this so I can get discovered. Yep. By WWE, then by TNA, then by AEW. Yeah, do you yeah. think that AEW and Impact might throw some bones to these Ring of Honor talents that they they have either worked with before or that some of their well-known, established wrestlers who are under contract with AEW and Impact have worked with before. Maybe not necessarily going as far as to sign them, but we've seen, we've seen people show up in AEW and have a match here, a match there, but aren't signed to contracts. Right. Do you, do you think we'll start to see a smattering of these... Ring of Honor talents show up maybe on the weeklies, not not all the time, and again not being signed to contracts. But is is there a, a bone to throw to say like, hey, maybe we give these guys some TV time? If it if it doesn't turn out like any big thing, who cares? Because well, they're not on a contract. If I'm, it turns out that they do really well, ooh, could work out in our favor. I'm I, I don't think that that no? they're going to have any kind of working relationship with with Ring of Honor. I think a Ring of Honor wrestlers may show up in AEW. That's what I'm saying. Like, the wrestlers um, themselves. Not, not yes. Ring of Honor oh, the yeah. business. But, yeah. like, these wrestlers who have been released from their contracts. Yeah, and when that, that's not till the end of the year. Now, I mean, obviously, if you know a company's going under, and you're like, hey, can I go work for AEW, or can I go work for Impact, or can I go work for NXT, I don't think the boss is going to be like, Nope, honor your contract. Um, they might, who knows? They might, but but honestly, I, I think that's probably going to be like, no, nah, man, you do you. So they're probably going to be given some 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 latitude. The 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 end of the year is probably just like to make sure that everybody's covered from now until December thirty first. I think if if people have other opportunities, they'll be encouraged to take them. Yeah, I it, so on, yes, I, I think you know, I, yeah, I think I think you would see like. I I don't think it's out of the question to see that, and while we may not you may not see them necessarily on dynamite, at the very least you might see them on you know uh, dark dark elevation. Um, so I, I I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility at all. One, and a really good example of uh, of it working out something like that is Ricky Starks because they had because he was with NWA oh, yeah he was with NWA Power. Um, they had him come in. It was supposed to be for a one off. And they were so impressed that they were like, hey, you know what? Like, we want to sign him. And they did. So. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, again, like Ring of Honor has always had some of the best talent in the world. And that's tapered off in the last several years because it basically WWE, NXT, that is, and, and AEW has kind of been getting to them before they get to that level. Yeah. And, and there have been a lot more like low level options like MLW, for example, like NWA, you know, well, well hell, uh, I was going to say if, if, you know, speaking of MLW, I mean, let's, let's not forget MJF was doing work with M uh, MLW when he first started with AEW. So, yep. Yep. So I, you know, I, I, but I, I, I do believe that this is a, 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 a death knell for Gabe Sapolsky's uh, uh, ring of honor. 
Um, which again is, is, is very unfortunate because I think that, you know, me personally, the wrestling that I love right now, like the, the, the true, like technical proficient, really great map based wrestling that we see, you know, on AEW or that we saw back last year on NXT, like that is all, all of it comes from ring of honor. 100% without the code of honor. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know where we'd be. So yeah, uh, it, it's, 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 it's a tough pill to swallow, but you know, that means that some guys are going to have a lot of opportunities like Jay lethal. I can't wait to see what happens with him. Yeah. Like, Roush. uh, I'm, 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 I'm excited to see what happens with Roush too. So like there, there are, there are those in ring of honor who this is going to kind of be a blessing to. I'm not going to lie. Was, where was Boot Boy at? Oh, uh, Boot Marty Boy. Scroll. Marty Scroll. Yeah, where was uh, he at? Well, before everything happened. Yeah, is he, he was, still punished? He was the head booker over at, at Ring of Honor. Uh. Um, obviously, once that came out, that stopped, and he's been, you know, banished. But, um, I, you know. I'll be honest. I mean, I, I don't know many names from Ring of Honor, but. The one, the one that you mentioned, Jay Lethal. That's that's the one person I do want to see, you know, where he would end up because that's that's the uh, God's honest truth. That's the only name that I definitely know. Uh, him and uh, PCO are the only two that I really know from Ring of Honor. And then you mentioned Roosh. I've heard of him, yeah. but I, d I don't know anything about him. But um, the, the Briscoes are a oh, really yeah. great yeah, yeah, yeah. team. Oh my God, but... how did I forget about them? <laughs> They're gonna have a real tough time latching on because they don't have a TV friendly like attitude yeah uh or wrestling but you know what neither did the dudleys <laughs> back before they came to, to wwe the dudleys were very not tv friendly oh yeah yeah big so time. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people if, in ecw that weren't that oh, got, yeah. yeah they got reformatted uh you know yeah and became tv friendly once they came to wwe um some something that you mentioned beef about you know the all the all the wrestling and stuff that we would have seen in NXT a year or two ago, uh, stuff like that. I, I kind of want to pivot there. I, I want to talk a little bit about NXT. What what just happened here at Halloween Havoc? Kind of a kind of a crazy freaking night for NXT. Uh, and I'm I'm not going to call it 2.0. I'm just going to call it NXT because you know you. what it is. Because you yeah we know. But um, I I gotta say like it's it's uh. I, I, I want to know what your feelings are. I, I know we talked about it a little bit probably the other night after the fact of it happened. I think we might have talked about it a little bit on stream. But how do you feel? <coughs> what, what's your overall feeling with how everything went down on NXT? The, the massive amount, amount of title changes and everything like that. I, I will say personally... I'm I'm glad that they I'm I'm glad that Champa hung on and I really want to go back and see actually see uh, his uh his God of War inspired ring gear because you know me I'm a big fan of that but let me let me get your take on the the mass the mass purging of incumbent champions <laughs> You know what I think that was probably the best show that I've seen of NXT 2.0 um with without hesitation um, and yeah, I mean, it was basically a takeover without, you know, takeover with commercials. So that, that certainly helps. But, um, like, I feel that like Mandy Rose is absolutely excelling down there and that her and Toxic Attraction got all the titles was a stroke of genius. I really like it. Uh, I feel bad that those NXT tag women's tag team titles have become a joke, but you know. Uh, no, no more so than the main roster with missed titles, I guess. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, because it they're flip flops so much, is that why? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Because right. because they've had like twenty champions in the first like, you know, six months of their being in existence. Yeah. Whoops. Um. But uh, you know, so I I like the move for Imperium. I I don't quite understand it. What happened with them? Uh they they beat MSK for the titles. Oh okay. So um I 
that leads me to believe that maybe N MSK may be on the upbound. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh... But, like, I, you know, when, when when I look at MSK, I see two guys who can absolutely go. Uh, I don't see any reason for them to be in developmental. And let's call a spade a spade. NXT is developmental now. Oh, that absolutely is now. Now that's the the, the way the way that they've pushed this the the new youth and everything like that, um, and 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 already taking people that like like Hit Row, taking them and putting them up on SmackDown or whatever already. I was not expecting Hit Row to go anywhere for a while. Um, I'm I'm honestly surprised by that. Not saying that they don't have the chops to do it or anything like that, but I just really. I, I didn't see it happening, um, and I, I'm not sure how they're going to use them up there, um, but it'll be interesting to see. I hope, uh, hopefully they don't get the NXT main roster treatment as the usual have done, but, you know, I mean, it's kind of, I, 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 I won't hold my breath, let's just put it that way. Um, I, I'm glad to see Imperium get the, get the rub, um, and get the, and get the titles, because they, you know. I feel like they're a damn good team and they can they could carry those titles for a while and with MSK if they're still going to be down there um they're absolutely a prime example of the money being in the chase cuz you know they're they're the ultimate you know babyface tag team right there the they they can play the underdogs so well and just come out smelling like you know better roses I'm surprised yep. that uh that Braun Breaker didn't win yeah, that was the one that I pretty much had, like, penciled in that was uh, going to be a certainty. Um, I get it. Um, th you know, there's going over and there's getting over. Uh, there was, there, there, there's a quote about, you know, getting over, going over, and both can happen. Oh, yeah. And, and, and that's the case here. He put on a great match with Ciampa, and um, it... It took two of Chompa's finishers after, like, three flash knees from him. So, like, that tells me that he, that they're, that they're basically just kind of setting him up, uh, for, for, for a big, a big switch at Absolutely. some point down the road. Uh, and, and they want to make that the focal point, not like the night that they switch every other title on the brand. Yeah. They want to make it so that, he gets his moment, which is great, and I applaud them for that. Now, um, who is the? Uh, is it a uh, Carmelo Hayes? Is he the one that has that won the Breakout Star Tournament yep. or whatever? Okay, I was making sure I had the right name. Um, did is anything coming with him? I think it was he sniffing around the North American title, or what's going on with that? Uh, he's the North American champion. Okay, cool. Uh, there it beat, is. Um, he beat. Um... Oh hell. Um... Hit row. What's his name? Uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Yep, Swerve Scott. He he, he beat Swerve Scott um, with this contract that he could use at any time. Okay. And then uh, Johnny Gargano stole the title from him, so they had to like break into the Gargano complex, and they have they had this big haunted house thing, and Dexter Loomis was there. The whole thing was really, really, really good. Uh, I'm gonna have to go um, back and watch it as soon as as soon as it's on the cock. I'm watching it. <laughs> Carmelo Hayes and his guy that he has with him—I don't know his name. Yeah, I can't uh, they, remember they, his name either. They—they they did a good job of making comedy gold of it. Now everything went really well. I could have done without all the stupid like fucking like partying backstage, like the, hey, everybody's in a costume, we're having a good time, it's Halloween, haha. -ha! You know, uh -huh. that, there, there was there there was a little bit too much of that for me. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, it was it was a solid show. That's good to hear. Now, with NXT being NXT 2.0, are they still going to be having takeovers, or are they done with their... Doesn't look like it. Event? What? Doesn't, doesn't look like it. It looks doesn't like look they're... like they're going to continue them? Nope, nope. Okay. WWE laid out their pay-per-view format for the next year, and NXT is scant among them. Yeah. So, that's, that's... Uh, that's a little disappointing. That's what I felt that NXT... <laughs> NXT original nxt uh og i felt like that's one of the things that they always always nailed their their takeovers were always phenomenal and i looked forward to watching them because 
man, it's, it seemed like they just struck gold pretty much every single time they did a takeover. And I don't know. I think for them to lose that, they're doing that brand a disservice. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed the takeover specials. It was, and it, it really did, it felt like a big deal all the time. Um, every single takeover felt like a big deal. Um, and even more so, I think, because of the fact that they came around, you know, once a quarter or whatever. You didn't have a monthly pay-per-view every single time. Now, you know, kudos, kudos to, you know, uh, kudos to WWE for making the the 12 pay-per-view thing, you know, 12 a year work because I think there was a time back in the day um, where where it was kind of looked upon as like, well, that's fucking crazy. Why, how are you going to do, you know, 12 pay-per-views a year? But they but they managed to do it. Now, again, they're rightfully so. Like, not every one of them is going to be a freaking, you know, uh, Grand Slam home run. Uh, we, we, all, we always... Yeah, we often say, you know, uh, well, you know, we don't expect this when we're making our picks and stuff. We're like, oh, well, don't expect, you know, this or this, that to happen because it's, you know, so and so is not going to lose title on this on this B pay-per-view or whatever or some, you know, middle of the road pay-per-view. It's not one of the big four. This person isn't going to lose whatever. So there is that. But with TakeOver, man, every every time you really you you really kind of wondered like where they were going to do it could be the you know it could be the new jumping off point for somebody else or you know continuation of a of an amazing feud you just never really knew um they all they, at least, you know they always kept me guessing so i know that beef would always seem like he was always very excited for takeovers is well, that a, it, is that a pretty big disappointment for you there beef that they're not going to continue with takeovers it's a heartbreaker it, it yeah. absolutely is. I mean, they they were every time WWE had a big pay per view, like I got excited for the whole weekend because I knew that there would be a great takeover preceding it, which meant that regardless of I, I, all WWE had to do was entertain me, that I would get my wrestling content from NXT. Now. I'm not saying that I'm not going to get my wrestling content from NXT. If, if if they had the chance and the platform, I still think they have the talent to pull it off. But I don't think they're going to have the platform. So you know, it's just it's just another little an, another little thing that 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 draws me further away from WWE. Yeah, I I can't imagine that. I don't know. This is speculating, running wild, but brother, brother, I can't. It is. I can't imagine that Triple H is happy with... I mean, if you have to figure, put yourself in his shoes. He built NXT from a game show into whether or not WWE wanted to acknowledge it, a legit third brand. Like, it went from a performance-centered game show type, you know, whatever, into being a legit third brand. Yeah. And probably in in the eyes of diehard wrestling fans, probably the best brand that WWE had. Now, now they do all these changes. They take a, they take away the the special events pay per views that you know NXT did have, and almost have then just relegated it to once again being strictly developmental. Not at all a third brand, not, not, not anything equal to Raw or SmackDown. That has to be a heartbreaker, I would think, because I know if I was in Triple H's shoes and I poured all this time and effort into cultivating this brand, making it my own, it's my brainchild, to see it relegated to this, it, it's, it's got to be disappointing. No? Yes? I, I would be. I mean, it's... And unfortunately, though, at the end of the day, you know, Triple H is at the behest of Vince. Um, and, and if Vince says, hey, we're moving NXT into the direction of it's literally the feeder system for the main roster, you don't have to, you're not necessarily, you know, considered a third brand. We're moving it. It's strictly developmental. Then, I, you know, it is what it is. And, and I mean, 
when when and whenever uh, NXT was you know originally formed, like when when Triple H came with the idea of the Performance Center and everything like that, you know he, he said like his question to Vince is like, what are we doing to make future stars? Like, okay, yeah, we have yeah you know, we have a good talent pool here, but what are we doing to invest in the future? So, you know, if they move it out of one. If they shift the if they shift the perspective of it being a third brand and strictly developmental, they're still accomplishing his original goal. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, it does suck because you know to the to the fans, it's 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 a whole you know lot of like oh well we had this we had this great thing and what it's it's like when you go to a restaurant that you've been going to for years and then they decide to change the menu and it's like well why'd you do that it was everything was fine. And then it's like, uh, I don't know now. I, it's, I don't know. It's it's a lot of questions up in the air. It's there's and if if the, at least the nice thing I will say about this, regardless, for us as fans, we've said it before, and especially now, there's a lot of options. So if you're really not digging what's going on in WWE, you can turn on AEW. You can go watch Dark or Dark Elevation, you know, on YouTube or whatever. Um, you know, I'm sure there's ways that, you know, if you, if you have cable and stuff like that, depending on the channels that you have, you could, you could go watch Impact. Um, you can watch NWA Power. I, th I think they're back. Um, I think NWA Power is back and, um, making new content again. I, I believe they're on YouTube. Um, so I mean, the, you know, there are options out there. Um, go catch a local indie show. I mean, there, there are a lot of indie shows going on, none that are particularly, convenient for me to go to right now but there's a lot of stuff going on because i i actually follow you know quite a few of the uh of our iwc um iwc pals there uh like you know facade and uh andrew palace and all them who admittedly there's a lot of iwc wrestlers that are you know getting some time in aew not necessarily signed with them yet but they're they're doing things on dark and dark elevation um and, and there's a lot of other stuff, you know, if you really want to go see some wrestling and just get down and dirty, go, you know, go to whatever, you know, little hole in the wall place with like maybe a hundred people and just go catch an indie show. Honestly, I mean, there, there's options out there, but my, but my point is there's, there's a lot, there's still a lot out there to see, regardless if we're not happy with one product or the other. So to yeah. answer your question, Ransom. I think that Triple H having an ego is probably past. Um, I'm I'm sure it's disappointing for him to see where the brand has gone as of late. But I think he cares more about the people than the brand. And I think it probably ripped his heart out of his chest to see so many come up and just get absolutely misused. <laughs> and Dollar. in a lot of cases released or yeah. worse, misused and you know continue to be misused or or worse not used at all so uh, you know i think that this at least gives him a light at the end of the tunnel now that they're doing things vince's way maybe these guys and gals that are coming up that are cutting their teeth your 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 Braun Breakers, your Tony D'Angelo's, maybe they have a shot at actually making it on the main roster. I got a hot take for you on one person, uh, Joe Gacy. I like I like that. I like that. Yeah, I, li I like his character. I I I, di I dig it. I I don't know. It's just I I've only I've only you know I've only seen a couple things. I haven't watched a whole lot of uh, of you know NXT 2.0 or whatever. Um, but but the couple of times that I've seen him, I I like I like the the duality of his character. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I I agree. Um, it's it, it's 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 the kind of thing that I think could play well. Um, and it's just like racy enough to kind of be touchy if if, if that's the thing. I like that they have um. What's his name? The fucking big Brock Lesnar looking fucking kid um, with him as, as, as like the heavy. I, I think that's a great way to introduce him and uh, really get the character 
uh, in line. So yeah, I, 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 I'm, I haven't I haven't seen that guy yet. So that must have been just recently because I haven't. Uh, again, I haven't paid. Couple, yeah. I haven't paid he's a whole lot of attention. Couple of weeks with Gacy. I will. I, yeah, will um, I will say, um, you know. uh, Diamond Mind, a good, a good little stable there, um, with uh, Roderick Strong and company. And I, I can't remember the ch the chick's name that's in Diamond Mind, but holy crap, she looks jacked. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, the 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 reports of NXT's demise were 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 greatly exaggerated. It may not be what we like, but I mean, it's still better than raw most weeks oh yeah i mean um, there's there's a lot of good talent there there really is it's just is. it's it's a new product to get used to i again i it's like i said before with my initial viewing of the 2.0 brand was that i didn't hate it but like the way it's it, it's the atmosphere of it that i could have done without i could have i could have dealt with the the kind of the darker and still the black and gold brand of NXT. I could have dealt with that atmosphere, but what they're doing everything else wise, I'm fine with like the you know the 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 you know the wrestlers that they're bringing in and stuff like that and the people that are getting a chance and and somebody like a Mandy Rose getting to shine. It it boggles my mind how it, it boggles my mind how she didn't shine on the main roster. But they bring her down to NXT and then boom, rocket strapped her back. Like I, so, I, 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 I know it's I know it's as simple. The simple answer is well, that's how they decided to book it or whatever. I I don't know whatever, but I I just don't understand why that has to be the case sometimes. Like why is it that I I don't know why do they not get used properly? I I don't get it. But um, gentlemen. Yeah. My molars are feeling very long right now. I I feel like so, mine are too. Do we have a uh, do we have a stump the chumps that we want to do, or would we like to save that for, for a future this episode. episode? No. Okay. So before we potato this episode, I have one final question for Beef. After being such a voracious NXT OG fan. And after having some time to absorb what NXT 2.0 is, the good, the talent, the bad, no more takeovers, do you think that the new format, the new vision of NXT 2.0 will cause any significant loss in viewership? Or do you think viewership for NXT will continue it's not nothing changing, nothing bad enough to make people say, that's it, I wash my hands, I'm out. Um, I think that they've already lost the viewers that they're going to lose. Um, or, or, is that a significant loss? I haven't paid attention. Uh, I mean, it ain't, it ain't great. Um, so it's not just a drop in the bucket. So it's, this is from October the 6th. Uh, the... Uh, 632, which is a little under what they were doing before. Um, but, I mean, realistically, they've been around between six and 700,000 uh, for the most part. So that's, you know, kind of where their wheelhouse is. So, um, you know, all these marks that are like, nope, we're, 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 we're never going to watch NXT again are either lying or never watched NXT in the first place. Could be it. Interesting. Good, good thought. All right, so since we are long in the molars, uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna extend this out too much longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you both middle fingers and say thanks to our sponsors, Casual Gaming Dad. He's on Facebook, he's on Twitch, he's on YouTube. Go look him up. He does the streamings. They're entertaining. The P3 Boys join him every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Among Us. It's a lot of fun. If you listen to this show and haven't joined do so you'll be able to interact with us kill us call us idiots and it'll be a wonderful time uh we'd also like that two pitches here and we'd like to thank sean tischler he does work with <laughs> iwc in the central pennsylvania area go check out iwc you'll see some wrestlers of the future competing there guaranteed uh i also do some stuff sometimes allegedly on the frig off ransom channel on youtube that's 1g for those of you who don't know how to spell frig Frig off ransom. One G. Um, go look at it. It's ridiculous and stupid. But uh, maybe you'll get a laugh or two. I don't know. Some people allegedly do. I don't. 
And uh, Poot the Bard, he's on YouTube. He hasn't done stuff in a while, but that doesn't mean that the stuff he's done in the past is no good. Go check him out. He does game stuff, guitar reviews, guitar equipment, lots of fun things. Until next time, which will be later this week when you listen to it, maybe. Or maybe you listen back to back. I don't know. For Tiger Bomb Tom, Beef the Legend, Sans Poot the Bard, and your halfling, half halfling, and your hobbit <laughs> of the Chooserweight Tag Team Champions, Ransom the Madman, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Hmm. <laughs>